Traditionally, in uh, older chairs, the webbing would go along the bottom, so I'd need to turn this upside down and then web it. And then I'd turn it right side up again, and what an upholsterer would traditionally do would then be to apply the springs on top of the webbing. Okay, and that's usually how it's done. Although sometimes it might be webbed on the top and then foam could be added on top of that or stuffings of some sort. Uh, and, and it could be so webbed since we're going to web it from the bottom, we're going to go ahead and turn it upside down like okay. so. I'm going to go ahead and use the synthetic webbing. Okay? So, now if you're using uh, the gooseneck web stretcher, you can pre-cut your pieces, which is an advantage. If you're using the basic web stretcher, it's best if you leave uh, the webbing in a roll and cut it off as you go. Okay, and what an upholsterer okay. will do is they have to, you have to figure out how many pieces of webbing you're going to need across there. One way to do it is to take a piece of webbing, which I believe that's three and a half inches, and you can kind of line it up there, and usually you want to have about a half inch distance between them. So if you take your thumb here and fold that over, you can see that it'll go across there about four times, so that might be a good number uh, to start out with. I might even take my uh, measuring tape real quick and find the halfway point, which it looks like about right there. And I might even make a mark at the halfway point there to help me gauge where the pieces are going to go. We'll do it on this side too. Here's about the halfway point. Okay. So you can take your little piece right here, or oh, maybe use a different color. You can make a mark kind of where you think it's going to go. This doesn't have to be perfect or scientific, but there you go. There you are. One piece of webbing is going to go here, another piece here, another piece about right there, and another one there. I'm probably going to too much work. You can probably just eyeball it, but you get the idea. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take my first piece of webbing, and we'll put it right in here, in between those two red marks, and that looks about right. Now I'm going to take my staple gun, okay, and we're going to staple across here five times. One, two, three, four, five, or maybe six. Who cares? Alright, then we're going to fold that over and we're going to do the exact same thing right on top of where we stapled before. So you can see we've got about ten staples or so. Yeah, we'll throw in one for good luck. Across there. Okay, now we want to stretch it to the other side. Now you can see I'm not going to be able to get it too tight by hand. So I need a web stretcher. I'm going to use first the basic web stretcher. Okay. Now you can see because the basic web stretcher is kind of long, you need a good amount of uh, webbing past the thing. So you get a little more waste, I suppose you could say, with the basic web stretcher. So you're going to turn this up at a slight angle here, and you're going to poke those nails or spikes or whatever you want to call them. Uh, right through there. You have to play with it a little bit because sometimes you can get it too tight, which I did. So I'm going to back off a little bit here and put the spikes right there. There we go. Alright, well, it's kind of difficult for filming, but here's the way it works. I'm right-handed, so I will take my left hand and push down sturdily on uh, the webbing here. So you see it's getting very very tight there. It should be like a drum. You should actually be able to hear it. Okay, once I got it tight enough then I'm going to take my staple gun put five staples across. Or maybe six. Okay. There it is. It's in there. Okay. Then I'll take my scissors cut it maybe an inch past like so. And we'll fold it back over and put five more or so staples in it. So there we go. Our first one's on there. You see that pings. It's tight. Okay. So that was with the basic web stretcher.
a little bit more expensive fabric or a stretcher is your gooseneck stretcher but it does have some uh, leverage advantages and that's what we're going to use from now on so we kind of have an idea of how much uh, webbing we're going to need here so it'd be something like this so I can go ahead and pre-cut these strips okay because this is not going to waste too much of it so there's one two three and four that's enough to do across here so I guess I'll stop there for a minute and we'll go ahead and staple those in so we'll do this a little quicker now fold it over the next one oops small one there we go and uh, and the last one now we are going to weave it so we're going to go the opposite direction when we get done here so we have a nice sturdy base okay now we're ready to stretch it to the other side we've already done this one here we're going to do the other three now sometimes you have to kind of hold your staple gun in between your legs or something anyway there you go the same thing you're going to poke the spikes through your webbing okay and then with your left hand you're going to put it pretty darn tight i mean so it's it's very very tight almost as tight as you can get it not quite maybe and then five staples all right just to save time we won't cut this just yet let's go ahead and move over to the other three there we go nice and tight five staples maybe six and there it is ping all right tight as a drum it should sound like a drum a little bit you don't want it loose or sloppy doppy okay so those four have been stapled five times six times once but we're going to cut it maybe an inch past like so and we'll just toss this up in the air and then we'll fold this over here and then again five or six staples okay so the first part of the weave is now done now we want to go the other direction so again I'll need four strips it looks like about mm, that long so here's one two three all right so again we want to put four of them across here so we'll go ahead and pre-weave this like so so there's my center one now and the other one that's kind of in the center will weave in the opposite direction like so then we need two more on either side of that and each time you're weaving it in the opposite direction so this creates strength and the advantage of the gooseneck web stretcher is that you can kind of pre-weave it whereas with the basic web stretcher you got to kind of cut it as you go or you waste an awful lot of webbing all right there we go now I'm just gonna go ahead and staple this side that's the furthest away from me I'll set it so it's about an inch past so there we go we can really go fast now watch this then we fold it over and do it again on each strap five or six more staples
Oops, we ran out of staples, which sometimes happens, so we just grab some more staples, <laughs> put them in there. <clears throat> there you go. Eventually you will run out of staples. They don't last forever. Okay, so now we've got it stapled on the far side there. If you want to, you know, you can trim it out a little bit. It probably doesn't make any difference, but now we're ready to go ahead and stretch it to the opposite side. All right, I like to start in the middle, but it doesn't really make too much difference. And then again, we're going to stretch this with our left hand. Sometimes you got to put your shoulder up against the uh, against the legs so you can get some leverage. So it's nice and tight. Hear that? All right. Then we go to the next one. You can see there's a slight gap in between each of the pieces of webbing. Usually it's a half inch, it could be a little less, could be maybe a little bit more. It's not that critical. Okay, there again. We got it nice and stressed. The whole chair wants to kind of tip this way, so that's why I'm putting my shoulder up against it. There's our third one. Nice and tight. Okay, and then the fourth strap going this direction, as you see. Okay, all right, then we take our nice scissors here, trim it, I don't know, an inch or two past the staples, and then toss it up in the air. No, probably best to throw it in the trash, but it's, it's the movies. All right, and then you do it again. So each of these straps has 10, 12 staples in it all together. So now we have finished the webbing. And hear that? I mean, it's, it sounds because like a drum. This is the traditional way it's done with uh, springs. Then, of course, we're going to turn it over like so. And you can see we have a nice woven surface, and they're very strong very sturdy. The next step would be then to place your springs into position. Now we're not going to go into this any further but um, these springs then would be secured to the webbing so that they can't move and then you would but tie your springs. Is how you stretch webbing using webbing and a web stretcher.